Charity is very important to me. In fact, a proportion of the sales of this video is going to charity. I mean, not much, I ain't that mental. <laughs> this charity is called Comic Relief and is run by my man, Lenny Henry. But don't worry, we personally guarantee that none of it will go into feeding his missus. Now, not long after we put out my last video, we heard a terrible rumor that thousands of people got DVDs of Ali G. That is absolute rubbish. Me has never given anyone the VD. <laughs> Firstly, me never ever sleep around and cheat on me Julie. And secondly, when me do, me always wear a Connie. Me can tell you absolutely, it was a me. <laughs> now, the first interview is with Posh and Bex. David Beckham actually gets all his haircut ideas from this place here. It was Safa who inspired him to have a Mohican and Candy, who gave him the idea of having it all shaved. <laughs> Let's hope he don't start visiting mermaids on Egamai Street though, because he'll end up with a massive frizzy perm, full beard and bushy sideburns. <laughs> Diggity, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Now, you was probably thinking, why is I doing comic relief? Well, me only agreed to do it because me thought we was gonna get a free trip to meet me brothers in Africa. <laughs> and while me was there, maybe score some Botswana and homegrown. <laughs> now check it, Africa ain't just the country that gave us Bob Marley. I seen... <laughs> it's true, it's true. I seen documentaries about it and there's some terrible images that has been left in my mind, especially of tribes women with well droopy swingers. <laughs> with your help, we can stop these shocking things happening. <laughs> a fiver will buy these people a bra. <laughs> and for a few thousand squid, there might even be enough for a tit job. <laughs> now, please big it up for me guest tonight. Every boy wants to be in his boots, and every man wants to be in his missus. <laughs> Big it up for none other than Victoria and David Beckham! <laughs> Now, scary is you comfy? <laughs> Beckham, what about you? All right. Listen, just because this is comic relief doesn't mean you should speak in a silly voice, right? <laughs> Don't say it to me. Now, where did you two meet? We met at the football. Beckham, was you into the Spice Girls beforehand? Um, no, but I was into Posh. Had you already seen a picture of her and knocked one out? <laughs> That's a yes, isn't it? <laughs> come on, what about that picture of her in the black cat suit and the boots <coughs> that come up well high? Apparently in that video, if you freeze frame it, you can actually see a tiny bit of camel toe. <laughs> ain't, that, ain't that right? I can see. <coughs> yeah, that's more like a camel hoof, girl. <laughs> All right. Now, it must be amazing going out with a Spice Girl. But in an ideal world, and no disrespect to your bitch, wouldn't... <laughs> In an ideal world, wouldn't you rather be with baby? <laughs> <laughs> so how many of the spy schools turned you down before you went for the <laughs> You went for scary first, what? <laughs> no, just this one. Now, does you go to watch him play football? 
Yeah, I do, whenever I can, because Brooklyn loves going to watch him, so as much as we can. Me heard there is an insulting song that they sing about you. As you heard it, what is the words? <laughs> they say, <coughs> posh bias, take it up the arse. That you, that you take it up the arse? That's what they say. <laughs> but that ain't insulting, that is the biggest compliment you can pay to <laughs> No, but seriously, does you take it up the back? <laughs> no, of course I don't. Beckham, you're telling me you ain't never been caught offside? <laughs> <laughs> no. But me heard you was well good at getting round the back and swinging your balls in, eh? <laughs> they do say it's the way he bends it, I have to say. It. Yeah. <laughs> respect, respect. A little bit of a different vibe from <laughs> Parkinson, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> now, Beckham, do you reckon the better the footballer you is, the fitter the girl you go out with? <laughs> Obviously. So, you is the best at footy, you know. So, oh, you yeah. get posh. So, does Sporty Spice go out with someone from Scumfoot United? <laughs> What do you mean? That's my friend and she's yeah. lovely. Exactly. Why? Is he trying to say Scumfoop is not a good team? Yes. That is, that is a horrible thing to say about it. <laughs> you has got a little nipper. Do you reckon you was good parents? Yeah, I do think we're good parents. So when did you teach him to roll his first spliff? <laughs> I will never teach him that. Why not? You should never deny your kid education. <laughs> so, what's he called? Brooklyn. All right, and how did you come up with that name? <laughs> well, we found out that I was pregnant while, we was, while I was on tour in America and we was in Brooklyn when we found out. So, had you actually done it there? No, we didn't do it there. Ah, uh, for real? We did it in Denmark, if you really want to know. <laughs> so how come you never called him Denmark? <laughs> That would be a well good idea, though, what? Because if me and me Julia had a kid, we'd call him Langley Village. <laughs> <laughs> well, his full name would be the Bogs in the <laughs> KFC in Langley Village. <laughs> so tell me, does Brooklyn like your music or is he getting a bit old for it now? like music he's, he's really you know he jigs about and dances and he's also into football as well so it's nice so Respect. He's doing a footballer with rhythm so tell me is your little boy starting to put old sentences together he's saying little bits and pieces and yeah and what about Brooklyn <laughs> so do you want him to grow up to be a footballer like his dad or a singer like Mariah Carey <laughs> I'm hoping that he'll grow up to be a footballer like his dad and I'd like to grow up and be a singer like Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> Respect. <laughs> We've got to have a break now because Posh is going to do a bit of breastfeeding backstage. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of interest, is there one going spare? <laughs> Check you later. Hear me now. This next interview is about the economics, the Franklins. Most people choose to put their money in a bank or building society. Me, I like to store it somewhere that give me more interest. <laughs> Hear me now, I is here with none other than Professor J.K. Galbraith, MB, the most renowned economist in the world. What is the economics? Oh, the most famous definition, English in its origins, is men and women, in the ordinary business of life. What is supply and demand? Is it like with Majuli, I supply it and she demand it? <laughs> supply and demand is an old economic expression. Is it like in my school, everyone was well into Tashid Vegi because she was all well fit and had nice skin and whatever, and you had to spend 75p even for a touch outside of you? And Zoe Lewis, who was a bit dodgy, looked a bit rough, 
She was 25p for fingers and thumbs. Uh, this is the case of supply and demand. Uh, the demand for the different uh, personalities, if I understand your for question, real. is quite different. So what notes do you have here? Uh, dollars, five dollars, ten, ten dollars. Would it not be more convenient if instead of having like just a ten dollar bill and a twenty dollar bill, you had like a five dollar nineteen cents bill, or like a twelve dollar forty eight cents bill, or like a forty eight dollar five cents bill, or like a seventy eight dollar three cents bill, or like a two hundred and sixty seven dollar fifty four cents bill? Or like a three hundred and eighty dollar nine cents bill, then you could pay for everything with one note, innit? I have no hesitation in saying that that would be so complicated that only you and a few other people would understand it. How much money do I need to be a millionaire? Uh, oh, a million dollars or a million pounds? For real, that is a lot of money. Can I still be a millionaire if I've got like? Seventy, seventeen thousand pounds, or something like that. Certainly, certainly not. Ain't that racialist? <laughs> so this, is, this is a simple arithmetic matter. A millionaire is somebody with a million. How could I be a millionaire? You would have to have uh, a very shrewd knowledge of the working of the economy. I've got an idea, and I want to run it by you, Professor Galbraith. What is everyone in the world got? Feet, right? <laughs> and what do they want their feet to become? Comfy. <laughs> How do they make their feet comfy? One word. Sho shoes. Slippers. <laughs> so me idea is to make slippers. Well, uh, they, they will not be the only person with that idea. What? Well, check this. I was going to use the intranet and I was going to do it on www.slippers.com. What do you think about that? I would point out that you will only become a millionaire making slippers, right. internet or not, if you make them cheaper than anybody else. What happened if I use the intranet and I do it instead of that address on www.swedishfunny.com? Because then everyone would think that they are going over to see some nice girls or whatever. And what would they see? In the slippers. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, that's your risk, fortunately, and not mine. Do you want to invest some money in it? Certainly not. Thank you very much. Thank you. Big up yourself. The most famous and the greatest economist in the world, Professor J.K. Galbraith in the house. Thank Maximum you. respect. And if you ever want to join me over the slippers, that offer is still open. Recognize. A lot of people come up to me in the street and ask me, what is animals? Well, animals, and particularly gorillas, is basically humans with overgrown muffs. <laughs> they develop through something called evolution which ain't just the name of the second largest nightclub in Bracknell. It referred to something called survival of the fittest. This is most obvious in the pop group Destiny's Child, because they has evolved from a four-piece band and their members has changed constantly. But Beyonce Knowles has survived all the changes of the band. Why? Because she is the fittest, despite her big thighs. To find out more about them, me went to meet the greatest zoologist in the world. Rinse it. So let's talk about evolution. What exactly is it? It's the belief that um, all of the different kinds of life on the world today are descended from the same ancestral organism. So what is we, humanoids, mm. evolution from? We uh, evolved from apes. So you is basically saying somewhere down the line, my nan did it with a monkey. Uh, not, not exactly, but we did descend from apes. Do you think my uncle Jamal might have 
recently evolved because he has got a very airy back and also one of them beards that stops right up mm -mm. there. Nope. <laughs> so when will the monkeys that live now become humans? Nothing says that they will. If I kept a monkey in a fridge for a million years <laughs> and then I took it out, would it be a humanoid? Nope. It would be naked though, wouldn't it? Uh, you mean in terms of not having any hair? Cloves. <laughs> it's hard to say. It's very difficult to predict how evolution goes in the future. But <laughs> what happens if monkeys look at the humanoids and think, all right, I want to be them, I as well jealous because they're having a laugh, mm. then they'd say, all right, let's do it. Let's do, the, let's do the evolution. That's not how evolution works. You can't... You can't so you claim, so you claim. <laughs> right. So, okay. so, so I, but I think this is an informed, we regard it as an informed claim. If you shaved a monkey, would it look like a human? Would it look like it? It might, superficially. Has you ever tried it? No. Why not if you was doing the study and surely that would be the first thing you went about doing? Well, why, well, why, would, why, would, we, why would we do that? What would we gain by that? to see if that we really is evolutionized from the monkeys. Shave them, let's have a look. Well, I guess people have done that in other ways aside from shaving, they've taken... Uh, Wax. No, they've taken uh, <laughs> rulers or uh, tape measures. Is we constantly being evolutionized? Good question. Thank you. There is... Uh, <laughs> evolution occurs extremely slowly. So what will we become? Impossible to say, because things are happening so fast culturally. Do you think we might become giraffes? <laughs> well, I think probably not. Which animal do you think we'll become? Probably deer. Uh, Birds. Uh, no, no, I think we'll... Sh I mean, I guess given, a, given enough time, given enough time, Horse? Millions of years, we could, we could event, you know, if, I guess if... Not fish. You know, well, again, it's hard to say. I mean, Nan sometimes says to me that I as an animal, <laughs> if I start chucking things around or don't wipe it properly, mm. is she right? Well, I mean, you, she may be saying that you remind, you, she re, you remind her of an animal because of things that you're doing. If she says you as an animal, I say, yes, yeah, so what? <laughs> Well, I mean, technically... You did it with a monkey. You could say... You what could is you talking to me about? Pass it over here. Don't be poor greedy. Don't be poor greedy. I spray past the air. It's free. It's free. It's so free. Yeah, safe. Wicked, wicked, yeah. Safe. 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 I see here in the hood. And these people behind me is genuinely brothers. And they all really like me. Honestly, they said it in everything. They even invented their own nickname for me. They call me Faggot. <laughs> to find out about all aspects of ghetto life, we went out to check out my homies in South Central LA. Realize. Check it, IZ in South Central LA to me ex-gang member Alejandro Alonso to talk about guns and tin. Check it. So how many gang members is there in the whole of LA? Well, according to the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, uh, from 1998, there were about 150,000 gang members. What is that? <laughs> We've only got eight in the West End's Massive. Eight what? Eight. eight. People in the West End's Massive. Is it true if you wear sandals on these streets, you can get killed by another gang? Never heard of that. Is it like in Stains, where if you wear feeler, everyone thinks you're a bit of a knob in? Uh, there's a little bit of that. There's a lot about if you dress a particular way that you already are identified as being part of, a, uh, of the counterculture. It is to do with colors here as well, is that right? Well, colors is sort of the division between Bloods and Crips, and the color aspect has really been highlighted through the media. What would happen if your mum did a wash, and you put in your pants in there or whatever, and she put in one of her red sweaters, and all your clothes come out red, even though you was in the blues. 
Probably uh, the person whose clothes got all discolored would probably throw his clothes out and go buy some more. Cause some of the yeah, but the mum will be well miffed about that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. What would have happened, let's say, if your nan admitted you like a red sweater or something, and you was in the blue crips? What would you do? Well, the person would never wear it in the first but place. But then it. His nan had like spent ages They didn't care. They would probably throw it out or they would tell her, do it my favorite color, which is blue. Yeah, but then you will make the nan feel bad or whatever. You make your own grandma feel like rubbish. Well, I don't think they're really concerned about making someone in their family feel bad about the color. Right. If I was in a situation like that, I would just, I'd probably take it but not wear it. But they will always, always check, you know? They will always check to see if they've spent that long knitting something for you and I was talking from personal experience. They're going to check that you was wearing that. Well, I personally don't know anyone who's ever had a sweater knitted for them. So maybe in England it's a little different than really? here it is in the States. So where is we now? We're in the heart of a Trey Gangster Crip neighborhood, which is located between Florence Avenue and Western, pretty much in the center of the city. What do you get when you join a gang? Do you get a free gun? <laughs> you don't get material objects. Is it like when we joined the Nat West Club? Uh, we got like free art price record vouchers and that kind of thing. Can we get those kind of things? To go and shop somewhere? Oh, right, cool. I've never heard of that. So do they have uh, twin gangs with gangs abroad? Um, I'm not sure what, I'm, what you mean by that question. Well, is it possible to like twin the Crips with the West End's massive or the Bloods with the West End's massive? Oh, that'd probably be very complicated because of the distance. It's probably what, about 8,000 miles from For there real? to here? But it would mean that when they went over to England or wherever, they would have somewhere to stay mm -hmm. and we could go on like trips and like do all the cheering and go go karting and that kind of thing. I'm not too sure that the people here would be interested in go karting and what travel, about canoeing <laughs> and upsailing. Nah, they probably want to stay here. They probably want to make their money here and get involved in their business ventures here. Is there like initiations in the gang? Uh, they got different types of initiations for the different types of ethnic groups. In some of the gangs in England, you is made to eat a sausage from someone's exit hole. Is that a community No, nah, that sounds like something they would do here in the fraternities and colleges. So, what is the toughest initiation for any of the gangs? Uh, it all depends on what that individual can bear. In the West End's massive, we has to go into the corner shop and nick, like, a Mars bar and <laughs> nick two uh -huh. and nick one of the Stains and Eggham Herald News. Uh -huh. Does you do that kind of thing here? I think it's a little bit more, uh, more complicated than snatching up a few candy bars here. Is there any difference between the gangs and, let's say, the scouts? The Boy Scouts? <laughs> Uh, there's some fundamental differences. Well, I don't think Boy Scouts have a defined turf or territory. But do you have like a leader, like an Arcala in a gang? Um, certain gangs do have a hierarchical structure in terms of leader. You have YGs or young gangsters, the ones that are coming up that want to be OG. So they is like the little boys who was just going into the Boy Scouts, was getting like their 25 meter swimming thing in the upper age. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like. <laughs> Yo, I swear the niggas so for me to air. I'm so thorough, I make the hardest nigga on your block. Shut it tear. Y'all niggas don't know about me. And P showing love for this niggas and even though his swines are whack. This nigga's so fucking gay that I heard his ass was sitting back, playing with his balls out, getting his shit jerked off, sucking his own shit. Saw this nigga on scary move while he was sitting there playing with his own shit. Yo, yo, said Ali and Julie sitting in a tree. K I S S I N G. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, intelligence ain't just showing off that you can count to 20. In the US, intelligence is so important that they has got an organization specifically for it called the Central Intelligence Agency, or known here as the CNN. And that is why he has gone to visit and interview the head of the CNN. Realize. So, Mr. Stansfield, what does the CIA stand for? Central Intelligence Agency. So does it help if you was intelligent if you want to get in? Yes, 
to get in, you need a college degree. Ain't that a bit racialist, though, that you have to be intelligent? <laughs> Isn't that a bit? Racialist, that you won't allow in thick people. I don't think it's racialist. We can't use them if they're a bit stupid. But ain't that unfair for those people because they'll feel bad inside if you won't allow them in there? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you laugh? Could I ever work for the CIA? I would certainly think so. You seem intelligent. Thank you very much. I've got two GCSEs. <laughs> right. Thank you. So let's talk about spies now because the CIA has also got to do with spies, isn't it? Is it true that you have certain female spies that you put a camera in their punani? <laughs> what uniform do the CIA spies wear? <laughs> they don't wear a uniform. They have to be as incognito as possible. Now look, uh, you go over to a foreign country. Now we have a CIA person goes to country X. Aye. And in that country, he finds Joe who is willing to give us information. Who is Joe? Joe's a member of Country X. He's uh, a citizen of Country X. Is it not dangerous that you is saying his name because this may be on the telly? Well, I mean, if I had a real name here, I wouldn't be saying it. Ah, they're saying his real name. I'm sorry? Is this his real name, Joe? I'm just making this ah, up. Ah, OK, all right, all right, I'll for, OK. <laughs> Let's talk about conspiracy theories. What about landing a man on the moon? Did it actually ever happen? Of course it happened. I've actually shaken hands with the first man on the moon. But how do we actually know that Louis Armstrong was actually stood on the moon? It was Neil Armstrong. Whatever. <laughs> how do we know? <laughs> I don't know. Has you ever seen the film JFK? Well, I mean, my understanding of the movie, Oliver Stone's movie, JFK, is that there was a conspiracy of one of my predecessors and the whole uh, cabinet of the United States to murder the president of the United States, and it's absolutely nonsense. That bloke who was in Dances with Wolves, he knows who did it. How come no one knows who did it? I, I don't know who this bloke is or... In the film? Well, I mean, how does... What, what makes this film... True. I mean, well, how, how do we... It's, uh, it's a true story. Well, how do you know it's a true story? You're, you're questioning whether people landed on the moon, and now you're telling me you believe a movie. Aye, uh, for real. I mean, how can you believe that movie if you don't believe what went on on the moon? Because they spent millions of pounds making that. I wouldn't they have spent, made it if it was... They spent hundreds of millions of pounds going to the moon. Aye. Uh, thank you, Admiral Turner. Respect. Big up yourself. Flicky! Next, we went to check out the ex-chief constable of Essex Police. Luckily, he had no links with the Berkshire Constabulary, otherwise, we would have been fried. <laughs> what happens when you is arrested? The person is informed that they have been arrested and the reason why they've been arrested do most people, in your experience of having arrested them, is the first thing they say, it wasn't me, in that voice? Yes. In that voice? A large proportion of people will say, it's not me. Uh, there was something which used to be called the verbals. For so real? that when you arrested someone, you said in court, uh, and I said to the defendant, I am arresting you for stealing... Uh, this silver cup, and he said... It was a myth. No, no, he says, fair <laughs> cup, governor, uh, I did it. For real. Does the copper sometimes sing as well? Because I caught you red mm. and dead. <laughs> because it was a myth. <laughs> and in fact, the police would then say, and he said, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. And I said, <laughs> I caught you on and the kitchen floor. <laughs> Why do you think youths is turning into crime? Well, I think it's uh, uh, as old as uh, man himself as to why people turn to crime. I mean, everyone know that it's against the law to be a criminal and it's well bad and everything, what? But you've got to admit, it's more fun being a gangster, isn't it? <laughs> well, I think, it yes, is isn't it? I think it is at certain stage, but when you're languishing in prison, you begin to have second thoughts. But sooner or later, it catches up with them. 
sooner or later they languish in prison. And they get bummed. And they get... Uh, <laughs> and even if they succeed, um, they live a life uh, on the Costa del Sol, they can't come back to this country. Yeah, who cares about that? that sort of thing. <laughs> but ain't the real reason why most people turn to crime is that they will get more punani yeah. being a gangster. Yes. I would say that the, apart from uh, crimes of passion, of which we touched upon briefly, the predominant reason why people turn to crime is for the very reason to make more money. And puni. Yeah. The pun pun. <laughs> so shouldn't you send a very clear message to the youths out there? Yes, in the short term, you can get more puni, more muff. But in the long term, you will get bummed. Yeah. yeah. I think that's uh, a statement well worth making to young people. What is the best undercover job? Well, the one that obviously ends with a successful prosecution for a serious offence. Because we saw this film called Beyond the Call of Duty, and it was about this police officer who had to go undercover and find out whether these ladies was prozies. You know what I was saying? Mm, mm. And he actually had to bone them, and he actually did, because you could see his beast going in. From <laughs> that must be the best one, what? Well, it certainly wouldn't be allowed in this country. And it has happened uh, on many occasions when, uh, certainly in the, the vice field, where officers have said, at that stage, I had to withdraw. <laughs> well, he didn't withdraw. Well, he did once, and then once she blew his cover. Mm. How do you work out who did it? By collecting evidence. All right, check this then. A man is found dead in a pool of water with a backpack on. How did he die? Oh, no, I forgot. There's a goose flying over. That is the clue. Um, well, you would say I want a pathologist, first of all, to determine how that man died. Did he die from uh, drowning if he was lying in a pool of water? Mm, not bad. Did he die from being struck over the head and fell into the pool of water? Mm, the or goose. whatever. I'm not going to speculate as to what the goose... What's uh, the answer? ..the relevance of that. I don't know. I think it was the goose. I can't remember. Whatever. It wasn't me. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the N.A. What is N.A.? Well, it's DNA, yeah, and it is, the, it is your genetic fingerprint, <laughs> if we're using that sort of terminology. Is the N.A. worse than the AIDS? No, no, it's not a, a disease, it's not something to be fearful of, it's just something that everybody has. Is I and, got uh, the N.A.? Oh, yes. How do you know I is caught the N.A.? Because we always well, wear that... a Connie, apart from that one time no, when no. she was so fit we couldn't wait because she was probably <laughs> to catch the Indian video. It is not uh, something which you contract from someone else or whatever. It's, it, took, it is not in any way like AIDS. It is a genetic formula which you have from birth. What else can you analyse the N.A. from? Any living tissue. Can you get it from jizz? <laughs> from jizz. You'll have to explain that. You know, a man's, without being ruled, man soldiers. Yes. <laughs> How does the copper get to match it? Does he actually have to toss the criminal off? <laughs> no, no, that would happen. No, no. When the suspect is arrested, uh, the DNA can be taken from any uh, body tissue. So, so he doesn't have to knock no. one out in court. No. <laughs> so... Respect. So all the peeps out there, we just want to say, stop thinking of coppers as if there is a bunch of, excuse me, French pricks. I is here with Chief Constable Burrow, and he ain't a prick, is you? Thank you for that. Here is some more of me and that zoomologist talking about animals and tin. Boo! Which is the most musical animals? Hmm. Well, I guess traditionally people think of birds. 
It's frogs, though, isn't it? Well, yeah, frogs. But frogs make uh, they have a, they make a noise, but birds make a really, you know, melodious song. Didn't frogs collaborate with Sir Paul McCartney <laughs> on that chorus? Don't know about that. But they also did that. They make a lot of noise. That's for sure. Well, didn't they also get involved with the Budweiser thing before the What's Up yeah, one? Yeah. What's up? Right. I used to like that before yeah. the commercial. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, they make a call. They make noise. For real? Yeah. What's up? Mm -hmm. what you, <laughs> you like that one? Oh, yeah. You meant to say it back when I said, what's up? Oh, what's up? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, in a different <laughs> voice, but you know what I mean. Got it. What is the point of animals, Professor? What do you mean by the point? They I mean, they've, they've, they exist. They're here. They're I mean, right. why is there life? That's a, tough, that's a difficult For question real. to answer. But ain't most of them, with the exceptions of monkeys and scorpions, with all respect to you, a bit crap? Uh, I think they're probably pretty, more, they're pretty important. Yeah, but you would say that because your job is on the line. <laughs> Why don't we give animals an ultimatum, either do something useful or piss off? Which animals do you want to say that? Two animals, all animals that ain't doing something useful. But I'd say, but why? I think a lot of them are doing something useful. Do you eat meat? Uh, well, yeah, well, I eat, you know, burgers and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Well, that comes from animals, right? Or not. Do they? Do they? Where does, the, where does hamburger come from? Comes from McDonald's. And where does McDonald's go? From America. <laughs> we don't just raise hamburgers. Here. You make them. Came from, came from cattle. Comes from cows. That's it, though. <laughs> Do you think that people should keep animals in their house? It's fine with me. I have some pets of my own. For real. Because my mate Dave, he's got a monkey, a lizard, and a boa constructor. Mm. Well, <laughs> he used to have the monkey. But it started... Um, you know, went a bit mental and started lasting its cack at his sister. <laughs> and so he had to let it go to its natural habitat in Laircroft Park. I ain't <laughs> seen the monkey for a while, the mental one. Why do you think that is? Did they let it go in Britain? Well, in Laircroft Park in Staines. Yeah, near where he lives. Probably died if somebody didn't kill it. Ain't it hibernating? <laughs> they don't hibernate. But... Probably not dead, though. If you haven't seen it, it's probably dead. But it came from around that area. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> Pet monkeys come from South America. Probably. But he bought it around oh, yeah, like about yeah, yeah, in a five shop. minutes away. Yeah, in a pet shop. Yeah, it's probably dead now. This is in London? Well, just outside. Tough, tough place to be in the winter for a monkey. Too wet, too cold. Well, I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. All right, let's talk about something else, because this has been a bit of a downer. Do you think it is right that animals is naked? <laughs> Absolutely. So how come it ain't right that we ain't naked? Some people think it, it is. But those people is mental. <laughs> so, well, by, by the standards of others. Don't you think it is wrong that some of them, and you know the ones that I was talking about, don't wear any pants? No, not at all. But I saw this horse the other day showing off because it had this, you know, massive beast. <laughs> you know, and she weren't wearing no pants. Doesn't bother me in the least. But why do they have to, like, you know, brag about it and say, check it out? <laughs> like, if I had one that long, and I ain't saying I don't, so I've got <laughs> well, big one, not that you was interested. It's, I certainly am not. <laughs> what happens if different types of animals fall in love? It doesn't happen very often, as far as anybody knows. And if, if they were, wouldn't, they wouldn't produce a, uh, an offspring. In most cases, it wouldn't, go, it wouldn't amount to anything. But what if the crocodile see the flamingo and think, I love her? Mm. Would you step in and say, no, that ain't right? Would I know? Mm. 
It's like me and me Julie though, because she comes from the east side of town and me come from the west side of town. West side. <laughs> and they said that it was wrong that we was meant to be together. But the first time we got jiggy, she actually came. So that can't be wrong, can it? <laughs> Whatever you think. Is there any batty animals? What does that mean? You know, funny animals. Uh, you mean ones that appear funny to us? No, 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 you know, over there and around the corner. <laughs> uh, so, why is all giraffes gay? Why are giraffes gay? Why is all giraffes gay? Who says they are? Well, they look it. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything we can learn from the animal kingdom? Uh, there's a tremendous amount we can learn from non-human animals. How come we can't, excuse me French, lick our own nuts? Uh, if they can do it, and my dog can do it, and that dancer, yeah, the Irish bloke, yeah. can do it, how come we can't do it? Just a question of anatomy, how we're built. But do you think with evolution, that in the future we'll be able to do that? <laughs> it's hard to say. We can open it up. That's right. A lot of people is well sceptical about ghosts, but me know for a fact that they actually exist. In fact, my uncle Jamal's house is definitely haunted, because one time we stayed round there, and late at night we heard a knocking on the door, footsteps on the staircase, a sound of a strange man's voice, and then a few minutes later, a banging noise and the voice of a man whimpering. Uh, uh. We found the whole experience very unsettling. So the next morning, me asked my uncle Jamal about it. And him told me that the house was haunted about three or four times a week. <laughs> the next time he was round there, we came face to face with one of the ghosts. It was the figure of a fully grown naked man with a massive tash. It was so lifelike. And it had a smell about it of what we can only describe as spunk. <laughs> to find more out about the supernatural, we went to interview Britain's leading expert on ghosts. Check it. I is here with Britain's number one parapsychologist, Maurice Gross. And we is here actually in a haunted house and I is well scared as brick in it. <laughs> How long has this house been haunted? This house? Aye. Uh, no, we got it all wrong. This is not a haunted house. This, this is my house. <laughs> so how do I know if I meet a ghost? Well, if it's an apparition that just comes and appears to you and then disappears, you, you will say to yourself, well, that must be a ghost. Uh, because, like, from my neighbourhood, there was once a geezer called Lolly Sasson, and he was, like, a total s stiff, you know, he'd never done anything, not even had a puff or whatever. And one night he was at the Crooked Billet, you know, in Ive Eve, and he was uh, dancing there, and he was trying to get it on with this girl, and she weren't even that fit, you know, she had nice bubblons and whatever. You know, she's, she's now a lesser, but that, I digress. <laughs> anyway... He took like 29 E's that night and basically he kind of just blew up, you know, he was gone. And now people who DJ now in the Crooked Billy say that they feel his hand doing a version excursion on the wheels of steel. <laughs> Do you reckon that that's possible or is it just the new Technics 1220s? <laughs> There's a lot of evidence that, that, that uh, apparitions do return to sites of violent death. Can ghosts or whatever, the paranormal, eat a few houses at the same time? Yes, yes. Because I think it was in 1989 or whatever, I was sitting in my house and suddenly the telly went out and all the lights went out and then I looked out the window and all the lights from all the houses around me went out and... I found out the next day that all the neighbourhood, all the lights went out for like half an hour. Yeah, but that may have been a breakdown in the electrical breakdown. I mean, that's not necessarily anything paranormal, is it?
What is ectoplasm? <clears throat> well, ectoplasm is the so-called uh, issue of a material from a physical medium. Once me was asleep and me dreamt that me was born in Mariah Kari and, you know, I was actually quite good without showing off or anything. And then when I woke up in the morning, there was ectoplasm <laughs> in the this. Was that because Mariah Kari was actually there? Answer that question. I really can't. I mean, if you say that ectoplasm exuded from you. Hi, for real. For real. There was something there that weren't there when I went to sleep. <laughs> I don't know. How will I ever know? You won't. <laughs> it's too late. It's too late to know that. I just kept, I just kept the, my Ilfiger pants. Mm. Well. Can I bring them in to be examined? <laughs> If you brought it in to be examined, what would we actually be examining? The, the ectoplasm. <laughs> it's on the, pa on, on, the, on the pants themselves? Aye. OK, I think I, think I could probably get that analysed for you. All right, thank you very much. Mm. <laughs> uh, and what does it look like? <laughs> I mean, it's been years. Because it was kind of... Um, it was... Like, not quite solid, <laughs> but it was there. And there weren't that much of it. How much was there? <laughs> about... In I air. don't know, about that, that much. In <laughs> yeah, you sure? Did you have... You didn't have your pants on at the time. I did. Are you sure it wasn't <laughs> semen? No, I listen. Uh, no, I, I ain't done. No, I ain't done. Listen, I ain't done that for about two years. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. You're Big up yourself. You're more than welcome. Big up yourself. Seeing. Yeah? <laughs> Obviously, most of the donkeys behind me is open to escape from the zoo one day and make it big in the porno industry. But for the unlucky ones they is forced to stay here in terrible conditions. As we all know, zoos can be cruel places. I have heard some terrible stories that some of these animals is being fed nothing but plants, <laughs> as if that weren't bad enough. Some of them don't even have their own toilets and is forced to plop in front of total strangers. <laughs> that is sick. <laughs> it's now over to my man from Kazakhstan, Borat. Now to my village, I haven't been here one month, I've been traveling everywhere. <laughs> hey, Papa! Where's Where's Velo? Velo! He has grown moustache since I last come. Before I go, he had no moustache. <laughs> and it's my mama! <laughs> hey, you have grown. You have... In Kazakhstan, we love animals. This is Igor. He is my pet. He is a beautiful pig. <laughs> I joke. I love him. Mmm. So good. Are there any eyes left? <laughs> This is my wife. <laughs> this is my other wife. <laughs> this is my mistress. This is my girlfriend. <laughs> this is my sister. <laughs> and this one I have to pay money for. <laughs> but she worth it. Wah, wah, wee, wah! <laughs> Here I am at the best hairdresser in Kazakhstan. Everybody famous come here. 
Edi Arzanian, Azamat Bagatov, Victor Hotelia from Almaty Summer, and even Walter. Now, please enjoy the next guide. Jean Dobre, Jak Shemash. When you hear the word England, you think of country with the most talented actors in the world. Lawrence Olivier, Ella Guinness, and Frank Spencer. Oh, Betsy, the cat, done shit. That man can do nothing right and two things wrong. This is why I come to Edinburgh Festival to find most talented performer, bring them back to Kazakhstan. Happy time! I now go to meet funniest comedians in Britain. Over sausage. Knock, knock, knock. Oh, what? Good morning, madam. Would madam be interested in buying a prime number? A prime number? What's one of those? It's a very special number. It's what we call a prime number. Divisible only by itself and one. I see. Well, what's the point of that? Well, it means it can't be broken down into smaller pieces. Hmm. And that means children can't swallow it. Uh, what is English humour? Like Forty Towers? Forty Towers. Yeah. Yeah. With, the, with the Monty Python. Yeah. We have... We've been likened to Monty Python <coughs> in, yes. in our reviews. Our reviews. Yes, we're this, when I look Python. at you, it yeah. reminds me of Monty Python. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is a classic. stick? St uh, that's like that. Slapstick. That's not a stick, that was a hat. Yeah, I love it. So you can come up and do a hit. Yeah. 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 You, oh, take, a shot, take a shot, take a shot. Take a shot. Go on, have a hit. Have a hit, the woman. I can hear you. Go on, go on, go on. Go on. <laughs> Best American poet, Martin Semester. Two or three or four live poets chanting their love warm hearts. Do you know Dolly Parton? Yes. What is she like? She's a very intelligent person. Yes. Extremely intelligent person. Um, she's done a lot of good things, a lot, a lot of really good shows. Um, she had a, a TV show which lasted two years, which was very good. Yes. She has a big Wow, who you are! Goodbye, Samantha Fox. She has lots more than that. She has a wonderful um, American folk art park. But they. It's so big. Well, that's, <laughs> that's her initial claim to fame. So. It's incredible. They say in Kazakhstan, uh, Hector. Performer is like a hunter who go into wood and try to catch uh, a kratzuli. A kratzuli. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a kratzuli. Yeah, a creature. Yeah, yeah but it's uh, uh, there. No. A wild boar. Right yes, now. but more. <laughs> it's a kratzuli, like a bigger kizot. And it make a noise in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> like what you said, but smaller. Hmm. I, I, I don't know what it could be. <laughs> Thank you, my friends. I go now to see Strip is Mon Amour. I hope it is as good as Strip Strip Bang Bang in Kizitzla Strip. Is like America, like no. that no. there is no hands relief. No, no. <laughs> I hope you will come to Almaty Festival in Kazakhstan. And is that international as well? We have, we have a pop group from England, right, said Fred? <laughs> <laughs> 
Big fat man. I too sexy. Ever sexy little fat. <laughs> you listen to the music, you yes. close your eyes, you feel the movement in your body and just you follow like you want with your body the flow of this music. Yes. <laughs> about the swan leg. My swan leg? Yes, please. <laughs> it's quite different from the ballet. Because my swan leg, I think, within the muddy legs, deep within our souls, is the white swan. And that white swan is a symbol of desire. Desire yes. is the most pure thing in the world. You know, the swan is a creature of the wild. It doesn't yes. float and flutter around with you know, white feathers. It's a wild creature because, you know, you've seen a white swan, it's never really white, it's still usually dirty gray. And if you see it webbed feet, the way it scratches through the water. And when you see it mate, it can be very savage at times. Yes. So we are creatures of the wild too. Civilization society tries to tame us. But no, there's something within us that doesn't want to be tamed. What is a swan? What is a swan? A swan is a symbol. It's a symbol of desire it's a symbol of purity. It's a symbol of the wild. But it is an animal? Yes. And how do you want audience to feel? I want the audience to feel exhilarated. Yes. I want it to feel energetic. I want it to feel, mm, you know, lively. Yes. Mm. And you want them to feel uh, with a sexy? Oh, yes, definitely. You know, I want them to be charged up. That's yes. what I'm here for. Mm. I have felt hard. Oh. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's bad? No, not it at all. Not, bad. not at all, not at all. There was no liquid. <laughs> <laughs> but it, mm -hmm. it is a problem. Because in Kazakhstan, this is bad. Oh. To see, but I never see something mm -hmm. like this. No, it's natural. We say in Kazakhstan that uh, acting and dance is like a life. Mm -hmm. And the theater is like a house. Mm -hmm. House. Mm -hmm. House, yes. And a man in the theater mm -hmm. is like a man in a house. Mm -hmm. And a woman <laughs> in the theater is like a woman in a house. Mm -hmm. And a light mm -hmm. in a theater is like a light yes. in the, the house. house. And 
food. Mm-hmm. And the theater. It's like a food. In the house. The mother boy. No. In Kyrgyzstan, manners is important. This my neighbor, Dr. Yemek, he very angry with me. He say I show him disrespect by calling his horse fat. <laughs> but it is. Everyone say so. Now we will settle this in civilized way. Gata! 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 In Kazakhstan, we fight for 60 years to get rid of communism. Here in England, after 18 years of rule by Maggie Thatcher and other English gentlemen, they put in a communist. I come here to Bournemouth to sunny seaside to see why politics 50 years behind Kazakhstan. Cinque. What I am is a vice chairman of the of the World Disarmament Campaign, ah, yes. and if I, you want to talk about that, I will be very happy to do so. Yes, uh, it is to do with a weapon. Yes. 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 Uh, you um, like to buy weapon from? No. Yes. I do not wish to buy weapons. I want to get rid of weapons. Yes. You would like to sell a weapon to Kazakhstan? No. No. Certainly not. I do not wish to sell weapons to anybody. Yes, so England will not buy any nuclear weapon from Kazakhstan. Well, I don't think England will buy nuclear weapons. Kazakhstan doesn't have nuclear weapons, uh, does it? Please stop interviewing. <laughs> to find out more about capitalism, I went to meet a man from the Institute of Directors. Hello, I am with my friend Richard Baron from uh, Institute of Director. He is deputy head of policy unit and he will explain, please, British economy. Hello. Hello. It's very nice <laughs> for you to let me be here. It's a great pleasure. I read in a newspaper, um, I read about fat cat. Ah. What is a fat cat? We like it very <laughs> much. <laughs> a fat cat mm -hmm. is it's the name that newspapers use for a director of a company, usually a director of a very big company, who gets paid millions. Yes. <laughs> yes? <laughs> <laughs> what is the problem? No. Well, the problem is that it makes other people very jealous. But uh, they should, uh, uh, a boss should get uh, paid more because he is a superior mm -hmm. to a yeah. worker. Mm -hmm. um, in Kazakhstan we say, um, um, a, a, rat, mm. a rat is not the same like a big... Uh, like a big horse, no. you do not, uh, yeah. they are too uh, uh, different. Yes. Uh, and so uh, uh, a worker <laughs> and a boss is two different races. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The fact that the bosses get more can actually be good to motivate everybody. Yeah. Well, All the rats want to grow into horses. Yeah? Yeah, no. So they work hard. <laughs> a rat can never be a horse. No. <laughs> if he works very hard. Yeah, no. <laughs> Why they call it with a kid? <laughs> I, I, because it rhymes in English, fat, because yes. you've got so much fat, here, cat. fat, cat. You fat. see, if you said fat horse or fat dog, yes. it wouldn't sound so good in English. What uh, if you call them fat hat? Uh, no, nobody's <laughs> ever tried that yet, yes. because hats don't eat, cats do eat. It's strange. Yeah, very strange. <laughs> Languages are often strange. <laughs> Why do they not say uh, fat boss? Because, because it doesn't rhyme, yeah? Fat cat, fat, uh, boss. fat boss. It's a yes. different sound, yes? <laughs> like fat, poetry, a little cat, bit of poetry. Jim <laughs> <laughs> yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My friend. My friend too. <laughs> You're nice. Cinque, now I come to conference of business industry. I pray I meet the fat cat. Zabrui. Uh, what is your name, please? 
My name is Colin Marshall. Yes. And you are from which company? I'm the chairman of British Airways. From British Airways? Yes. <laughs> yes. Ah, it's fantastic. So right here. It is fantastic. From That's British right. Airways. Yes. In Kazakhstan, we, <laughs> we like very much British Airways. Good. Good. Uh, we hope you will make a, come to Kazakhstan. Good. It's a deal. I hope. Is it there? <laughs> Is it there? I hope so one day. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good, Good luck. Do you employ everybody in your co company? We employ everybody, yes. Do yes. you employ women? Yes, absolutely. You employ? But why? <laughs> but why? Why? Well, because they, they got jobs to do. Hello, Lord Sode. Ah, good morning. It is uh, very nice to meet you. Uh, very nice to meet yourself. Uh, you are a real lord? That's right. <laughs> it is a very honor for me to meet you. Thank you. And what different type of lords is there? Well, there the, the, the two, the two kinds, the hereditary and the life pair. Somebody uh, yesterday called me Say, I am a gay lord. It is true. Uh, a gay lord? I don't know. If... That has nothing to do with homosexuality, I suppose. No. As a, we're in my hotel. Yes. Uh, there is a man I have a drink with him. Yes. And he said, Thank you. Uh, you are a real gay lord. And I say, Thank you very I see. much. That's right, yes. We like very much the Queen. Do you know her? Uh, I've been presented to her once. Uh, the Queen, she is a beautiful woman. Oh, indeed, yes. She is very, very beautiful, very, yes. s very sexy, no? Well, I wouldn't I'd like to use that uh, popular adjective about her. I would no. say, uh, yeah, like, yes. a beautiful, like, oh, she is, uh, yes. uh, very, yes. you like to uh, be with her. That's right. And I have a picture of her in oh. my uh, room. Uh, oh, uh, very good. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. In my country, we love uh, England, Great Britain, Queen Victoria, Winston Churchill, um, Kenny Dalglish, Spice Girl, but we do not like uh, Europe. Why you want to join with Europe? I, I, I just thought it was one part best to belong to, yes. Some of this uh, country have a very strange culture. Yes. Some countries do, I suppose, I don't know. Mm. Uh, in France, they eat a cheese it, 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 it. Eat the cheese from uh, milk. Yes. All the time they eat the cheese. Oh, yes, nice ripe cheeses. Yes, they're going for a lot of that camembert on. Uh, indeed. What is a single mother? Uh, a, a, a single mother is somebody who's had a child um, uh, and the husband isn't there. Yes. Why do they allow this to happen? Uh, well, I, I see. How are you suggesting they should stop it? In Kazakhstan, under communism, yes. they, because there were suddenly many, many mother with a bastard. Yes, I see. And uh, they instruct, uh, in communism, they instruct men to make a love only uh, to the bottom. You think they should do this here? L love to, to what? If she is a virgin, yes. you make a love to the bottom. Uh, to the bottom. Yes, I see, yes. You think they should do this here? Um, it, it, it sounds a bit unnatural, doesn't it? Do yes. you like me? Yes. I didn't see it from the, out, well, from the outside. You probably know better than I. I like you. I like uh, you too. It is a very nice to meet you, Lord. Thank you very much. This is the room that I come to party. This is my friend Azamat. Hey, high five! This is it. Ellie! This is Azamat. Two! <laughs> hey! Hey! It's Johnny! Johnny! And, and this one over here? Uh, you're not my friend. <laughs> you're scared. <laughs> this is my friend Marie. I come here for massage and how you say hand relief. On the first day, he cleaned my home. <laughs> Now please enjoy my guide to sport. Hello, boy. Jim Hello. Well, welcome to the Tambly Club. Thank you. Very nice. We will try and show you. Be, uh, welcome. 
Great pleasure. That's what we call the jack. And we yes. bowl to the jack. Who is Jack? The, this is the jack. But yes. we are going to throw this down to the bottom. If you'd like to try, would you like to try? Yes. And when will Jack come? No, no. This is called Jack. <laughs> yes. That is, a, that is Jack. This little ball, understand? The yes. ball is, is, is called a Jack. And what is this ball called? That's a wood. Mr. Wood? No, a wood. <laughs> there is a, a man called Jack. He dressed like a bull. Oh, no, no, no. We are going to bowl to this yes. wick down the bottom. I understand. Right. And when will Jack come? This is the Jack which yes. we, we are going to bowl to. Our like a Jack and Nicholson. <laughs> take, the, take the bank. No, 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 no. Yes. No, no, no. Right. Yes. Bowling shoe. Yes, a shoe. Bowling shoe. Shoe. Yes. From shoe experience. Trousers. Trousers. Jack. Hello. All right. <laughs> you yes. understand now. Right. You hold it like that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now stand on the jack on the mat. That's the mat. This like a cat on mat. Yes. Cat on the mat. So I like a cat yes. on the mat. Yes. <laughs> now you try. Oh, no, not too fast. <laughs> you must do it gently. Yes. Try again. Like this. Uh, yes. Like that. Yeah. Like that. Right. Do many people get hurt playing balls? Nobody gets hurt. No, nobody gets Do hurt. Do many people die no. from this? Only the older people with a heart attack. But if you get a ball like this and you take it on someone's head and smash oh, no. many times, <laughs> no, it, you, can, oh, yes. it can you, hurt very bad. That's not balls. And if you put your hand there, yes. it helps. Just... It's balance. Yes. So just try that. OK? Yes. Don't worry about that too much. Relax. Nice, nice and yes. just relax. <laughs> it's difficult to relax like this. I know, but you must relax. Yes. Hey, relax. No, you, your bias is going that yes. way. Yes. Do you want to see our changing room where the yes, changing rooms please. are? Yes. Yes. Will there be many men with no clothes there? No, they no. Come outside. No. What is this from a uh, Berkutex? Yes. What is in here? <laughs> you shouldn't touch that. But why? Because <laughs> that's, that's their private stuff. <laughs> I like to find <laughs> out about them. Oh, right, OK. And what is this here? That's a urinal. Is it shower? No, that's where they do their toilet. You lie yeah. down here? No, you stand up. Stand up. You, uh, And then... No, you, that no, no, like no, no, this? no. You just do a wee in there. What does this mean? And this one? Yes. Yes, I know. Yes. And this, if you think you come and. Oh do no, it. you stand up. You do it. No, dirty no, you do. Here. No, you do it this way. Can you do it dirty? No, in there. Or oh, this one. Yes. Which one you prefer? Depends what I want to do. Yes. If I just want to do a wee, you do it in that one. Otherwise, you do it in this one. But if you want to do a dirt and you are in, in a there. hurry, in there. and there is someone in there, you do no, it. No, 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 that's not allowed. But no. there is space for... Uh, yes, no, that's water only. But you can have five men do a... Yes. Squeeze uh, something... You understand? Oh, you I know. You squeeze from the... No, you do, no, you do it there. When you've been to the toilet, yes. you wash your hands. And do you ever do a toilet in here? No. <laughs> You'd be thrown out of the club if you did. Why? Because it's not hygienic. But why not? Because you've got that. Look at that. Oh, hello, Bill. Hello. Nice How to you? see you. Hi. Yeah. This is Borak. Oh, right. Hello, hello, Borak. Borak, come here. Very nice to see you. Nice to have met you. Um, and what, your name is? Todd Slaughter. Todd. Todd. Todd Slaughter. Slaughter? What does, Slaughter. What does it mean? That's to kill, an, that's to kill. A, that's, an un, that's right, it's yes. an unusual name. Yes. But I will say, laughter yes. with S in front. Yes. Yes? 
So that's, yeah, that's where it's arrived. Borat. Borat? No, I do not know that name. <laughs> but, uh, like a Barry, like an English Barry. Like English Barry, right. But some yes. people call me Steve. Yes? <laughs> Why do they call you Steve? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Why not? Yes, I, know. I met a man uh, in King Cross last night. Yes. He wear leather trousers. He called me Steve. Right, <laughs> right. Now, uh, my, my, my first name, Todd, yes. is, is a nickname. It's called Nick. No, 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 it is a nickname. Yes. A pseudonym. Yes. Uh, a nom de guerre. Yes. Do you understand all those words? Yes! Yes? yes. A super K. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's what it is. So, uh, but no one calls me Nick, no. <laughs> so where do we go now, Nick? We go now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We go now to the, the, the outdoor club of, yes. of Watch It's Bowling Club. Do you sometimes make friends from this? Oh, very much so. It is a one way actually to make a lot of friends. Yes. Uh, and particular if uh, some of the, the people who may be on their own, who yes. uh, are looking for someone, uh, yes, a, a you partner maybe. Then you can uh, maybe th th you can play make the friend. game and then have a do a sex. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know about sex, no. Yes. But it certainly doesn't go with that. But yes. it doesn't really matter what your ability is. Yes, you can actually join in. And gypsies can they play, or is best to keep them away from the? Well, I would seek to keep gypsies away. Yes. <laughs> The you, don't, you don't really want trouble, mate. Thank you, Chen This is my friend, Nick. He shows us how to play ball. Thank you, Nick. Bass in your face. Now it's time for the second Posh and Bex interview. Welcome back. Me and Brooklyn is both well fed. <laughs> Respect. Now, Posh. I know a lot of people have asked you this, but is you really posh? I'm not really posh, no, I just For like real. nice clothes and nice restaurants, and that's how I got called posh. David, they say posh people talk as if they got a plum in their mouth. <laughs> Does your missus sound posh when she got your plums in her mouth? <laughs> he was going to say you're not actually meant to speak when you've got your mouth full, so you wouldn't actually have that problem. Respect. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> Posh, me heard you recently had a disease of the head called meningitis. <laughs> <laughs> Is you better now? I had um, viral meningitis, man. <laughs> that is well bad. So did Sporty catch the meningitis from you? Because she, she has got it well bad. <laughs> Don't laugh, that is serious. She got a bad case no, of it. No, none of the other girls have had meningitis, only me. <laughs> Respect. Now, Beckham, you was being well quiet there in the corner. Yeah? You was better, don't think, I mean, this ain't like a classroom where if you keep your head down, I won't <laughs> ask you questions, you know? <laughs> now, why do you think you is a pin-up for so many gay lords? We don't... <laughs> me, me don't use the word butty men now, cos it ain't politically correct. You tell me. I mean, just because you wear skirts, your girlfriend's pants, have a suntan and a skinhead, talk like a girl and hang out with Elton John. What's going on with that? <laughs> nothing, nothing wrong with that. For real, respect. Let's talk about fashion. <laughs> Beckham, we have all seen pictures of you wearing clothes that is well embarrassing and make you look like a laughing stock. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you wear that England football shirt? <laughs> I'm very proud to play for England. You know, the results have been very good over the last year or two, but, you know, uh, new manager coming in, and I think uh, there'll be changes, and I think we'll do very well. Be patriotic, for goodness sake. I is, listen, if Jamaica is playing, <laughs> I is always supporting them. <laughs> so, keeping on the fashion, what's the name of that dress that you wore? The sarong. I know it was so wrong, but what... <laughs> What was it called? <laughs> me gotta say, and me hope me speaking for the rest of the audience here and the country, that me would love to see you two bone each other. <laughs> How's about right now for comic relief? <laughs> I'm posh, I don't do that kind of thing. But it's for charity! I don't care! There's brothers out there dying and shit, come on! <laughs> No, but... Come on, let's see your red nose. 
Well, can I bone your missus? <laughs> yeah. Respect to both of you for coming on. Please big it up for the main couple in England, Posh and Bex! <laughs> Big it up for them. You has now reached almost the end of my vid. It is, in fact, my third video. And the only other artist we know that has done more than that is La Chicholina. And in her fourth one, she had to do it with a Labrador. <laughs> so we reckon this is probably my last video. <laughs> Anyways, respect for watching. Keep it real. I'm out of this bitch. Biz out. Peace. What is the strangest things that you have seen there? I think the easiest way to put it is it's amazing what people can figure out to put up every hole that they possibly have. For real. Um, I find some of the strangest things. Sometimes the funnier part is what they try to make up as a story of how it got there. For real. But some of them stories is true. Mm, most of them aren't. Most of them, they try to make sure that, that it doesn't sound as bad as, as it really is. Because me Uncle Jamal once had to go to the emergency room because he was doing the vacuum cleaning and the phone rang and then he accidentally slipped on an orange or something and then he fell on the a bit of the vacuum went up his body. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people at the time didn't believe, didn't believe him. It. But he said that it happens a lot. It's true, isn't it? The, yeah, you can get injured in any way. You know, okay, this happened to your uncle once. Well, okay. it happened twice. Okay. <laughs> but same injury? Yeah, well, yeah, the same injury. I'm not saying your uncle's not telling the truth but I have more trouble believing that it had lightning doesn't strike twice in the same place. Well, so no, it didn't, it didn't have lightning up there, it just had the <laughs> vacuum.